Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an absolutely incredible day. And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. I think this probably maybe goes completely without saying, but I, I think you all know exactly what time it is. Crypto industry executives have announced the start of the bull run. Yay! Yay! Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Yeah, for those of you who've somehow missed the last year of life within the crypto, like literal year, within the cryptocurrency space, Bitcoin has just all but tripled. Just all but. Like, eh, smidge. Um, tripled in value since the beginning of this year. We are getting price predictions left, right, up and down. You, you, you really don't understand how many people are optimistic about the next two or so years. What else is there? I, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing like nine bajillion other things that have also been happening. But apparently, so saith the interwebs, uh, we officially entered the bull run when we went past I believe it was 38 or 39 thousand dollars and stayed above it or something around those numbers and now we're getting like a a wide range of people being like hey yeah yeah yeah, yeah me me over here I also knew that the that the bull run began I mean if just from a logical standpoint um I think Bitcoin more than doubling over the course of a year should have probably already been a big enough indication, but who am I to say? With now more voices coring, co coring, calling for a brand new all-time high for Bitcoin in 2024, going well above 100,000 US dollars. Uh, for those of you who were not here two or three days ago, oh gosh, who was it who said it? Oh, I can't remember the name. It was some some crypto analyst person. Ah, no, no, no. It's the guy from um from Blockstream. The guy from Blockstream, Adam Back, I think is his name. He says he thinks that before the having even takes place, before the having takes place, he thinks that Bitcoin is already going to be over one hundred thousand dollars. And then we got into the whole discussion as to exactly how high Bitcoin can go, which just was a bit crazy. Speaking to CNBC, someone by the name of Pascal, I would I would pronounce this Gautier, or is it Gautier, CEO of Ledger. No, it's probably Gautier because he's French. CEO of Ledger noted that 2023 was a year of preparation for the growth ahead. He said that the sentiment for 2024 and 2025 is very encouraging. That is an understatement. People think that in, what is this, December? People literally think in like 14 months, we're going to have a $400,000 Bitcoin. You know, very encouraging is like a bit like a hyper mega understatement at this point. He said, I think that once you get, what? I think that once you get the speculative phase, okay, I can't read, Split phase out of the way, which I think we're almost done with, probably not yet completely done, then you get real builders focusing on the technology and problems that can be solved in the world rather than just having a giant digital, what? Okay, that's kind of weird because usually people tend to build when the prices are low. Those are like the actual real builders. They build when the prices are down so that they don't have to deal with the... Oh, this was also this was said by David Marcus, who is the CEO of, of of Lightspark. Now that apparently those issues have been solved, investors are focusing on what the industry sees as a positive development. First is the growing ever present excitement of Bitcoin ETFs that could attract larger traditional institu investors and institutions who have previously been reluctant to touch crypto, which is very weird because they can literally just go to Coinbase or any other cryptocurrency exchange to be able to do so. So yeah, another day, another prediction, I guess. It seems that everyone is of the mindset that next year we are going to pass by 100K, which kind of then leads the way for at least 
a $200,000, $300,000 Bitcoin. This also means that altcoins have completely lost their mind and are, you know, why couldn't I speak there? And are going uh, quite insane when it comes to prices. I don't know how many trillions we're going to get into the market, but what was the thing we saw a couple days ago? Someone was estimating around, I think, three to four trillion dollars just because of the ETFs would be flowing our way. And all I can say is, yay. We'll see it when it actually ends up happening. I do firmly believe we are going to at least pass by 100K. I would not be upset if we pass by 600,000. But I think every, you know, the, the, the excitement is so strong right now that I need to just kind of be there as opposed to uh, continue speculating. Yeah, of course, this was major news. We've had multiple wealthy individual billionaire millionaires over the course of the last couple of days all generally predicting the exact same thing so cool um pascal gautier the ceo of ledger and david marcus ceo of lightspark have reiterated that it looks like the bull market has begun i i think we're well i think we're well beyond that at this point but you know everyone's just waiting for the brand new all-time high at this point that's the Money news. And yeah, let's move on. Oh, boy. Um, so you know how like every now and again, no, actually quite often. More than often not, we tend to get what I like to, can, can, you know, I, I, I call very weird, ridiculous cryptocurrency news. So, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll even give you this one. This actually isn't even really cryptocurrency news, but I'll explain exactly how it ties in in a couple of moments because you'll know exactly where this is going. There's someone by the name of Peter Schiff, that is S-C-H-I-F-F, who is always, always in the cryptocurrency news. This guy appeared around 2014, 2015 and kind of assumed he was an economic hotshot and started to complain about crypto and namely about Bitcoin. He doesn't like Bitcoin. He thinks it's the worst thing on the planet. He doesn't understand why people are so into Bitcoin. And at the same exact time, he invests heavily in gold. He's known as a gold bug. He believes or continues lying to himself that at some point gold's value is actually going to surpass Bitcoin. We've gone over that 38,000 majillion times that it's not. It is just plain logic. I don't have time to sit here and argue with anyone because people, I mean, in, in the olden days of this channel, the people who used to actively try to argue with me in the comment section that gold at some point was going over $40,000 an ounce and that Bitcoin was never going to move above 10000 was draining to my soul. So, in very popular news, and I'm going to show you, and I, and I hope you actually get something from this, because in popular news that should not be popular and it should just be ignored, I bring this to you because this man continues to be popular within the cryptocurrency sphere, and I don't understand why. I've seen people making fun of him, but I also know that to a certain degree, people listen to the nonsense that this man has to say. Part of the problem is, is if you've watched this channel or my other channel, Money Rules, uh, you will know that there are a lot of people in the financial world uh, who at some point got one thing right, And kind of have continued riding that wave for almost two decades at this point. And it's very frustrating because these are the people who convince other people not to get into crypto. They tell you years ago that the U.S. dollar is going to do this. Gold is going to move this way. Make sure you buy as much silver as possible because silver is going to completely surpass the U.S. dollar. And remember when I told you before a couple of months ago, maybe it was also Peter Schiff, I don't remember. But there's a huge there's a huge amount of people on the planet and it's, it's worrying for society who actually believe that at some point we are going to like use gold and silver again. 
Um, not you know n- because because paper no longer exists in that world. Neither does ink. Um, and they think they were going to start cutting off chunks of gold, like like a, a gold piece, like chiseling away at it to get a little piece of gold to be able to buy a stick of gum. Anyway, that's that's also relatively where Peter Schiff currently is, and I'm going to show you. Uh, why this news was so popular. And I think that a lot of people in crypto really need to take a, a, a huge step back because I, hmm, I've i noticed that a lot of the more popular people in the traditional financial world and in the cryptocurrency space are out of their flipping minds. I don't mean like, oh, that guy's different. Oh, have you seen Mark? He's a bit weird. It's like, no, these people are actually like not living on earth anymore. But the problem is, is that sometimes the the weirder you are, the more people you get to actually follow you. It says Peter Schiff has recently voiced a stark prediction. The U.S. dollar is on the brink of an historic crash. And I will tell you right now, I, I will look into my digital crystal ball Oh my gosh, wait, it's not. That's crazy. Amid the shifting global economic landscape, which there really there there actually isn't, particularly with the de-dollarization efforts of BRICS, that is B-R-I-C-S. Schiff's prognosis for the dollar paints a rather grim picture. For those of you who don't know what B-R-I-C-S is, BRICS, it's a consortium of five different countries, only one of them who has a very strong economy, which is not as strong as people predicted that it would be around five years ago, have been trying to get away from the vice grip of the U.S. dollar since around 2005 or so. But the problem is that a lot of people don't read history. They don't care to read at all. They do no research and they have the little understanding of what's actually happening in the world. The idea for a lot of people is that BRICS will bring about the end of the U.S. dollar. The problem is, is that the U.S. dollar is so strong and a lot of people who are betting against the dollar actually have no idea how strong the dollar actually is. And even the countries who are trying to get away from the U.S. dollar, they're doing so unsuccessfully as they have been trying to do this since around, I think, the 1960s. However, there's like this mythology surrounding the the BRICS alliance. Now, here's the, here's the dumb part. The idea is that these five countries who have one who has an okay economy and the other four who have absolutely egregiously terrible economies are going to join hands and become Captain Brick Planet and wipe away the US dollar. Now, here's the, here's the weird dirt part is that people within the cryptocurrency space believe that as they wipe away the US dollar, they're going to go, hey, we need a brand new currency. Let's use crypto instead. And then the other issue is that the the fragmentation gets even worse because each individual who has invested in their own terrible coin believes that that coin can then also become the new coin of bricks. You think I'm joking, but look into it. The things that in conversations that people have, I always told you, I always lurk. I always look around and read and see what people are saying. It's popular in crypto because the the delusion is that if they somehow they won't get rid of the U.S. dollar, that they're going to be like, hey, let's use Tron instead. Have you guys heard of Shiba Inu? That should be the new thing that we're going to use instead of making a brand new currency that, you know, blah, blah, blah. Taking to social media, Peter Schiff boldly declared that the U.S. dollar is teetering on the edge of a catastrophic decline suggesting profound implications for the U.S. economy and the global financial system. And I'm going to show you exactly why this guy needs to never, ever, ever be listened to ever again. 2023 has been a pivotal year, largely influenced by the expanding influence, okay, by the BRICS Economic Alliance. It is Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. If you get a chance, if you get a chance to watch a documentary or a video or anything, you can you can YouTube it about the economies of these countries, you will understand that a 180 
plus country alliance all using the U.S. dollar in some form is not going to be taken down. South Africa, are you actually joking? The bloc has been actively working on reducing the world's reliance on the U.S. dollar for the last two decades, and it has not worked. Their efforts have aligned with delusions that they are trying to get away from the U.S. dollar, and mainly this is why a lot of these countries and other countries who are deemed to be working with them are, are currently under sanctions. For those of you not looking at the screen and, and don't have a, a clock or a phone in front of them, this year right now is the year 2023. This is an article from the year 2022. It says, Economist Peter Schiff warns the U.S. dollar will crash. Says we're going to default. Oh, that's fantastic. Here's a podcast from 2021. It's called Sacrificing the U.S. Dollar. It says he warned us and he was right. Wow, that's crazy. Peter Schiff was one of the few investment professionals to caution the public about the 2007 financial crisis before it began. That's false. There were actually dozens, if not even more, people around the world who realized that something was actually going on. You can't package garbage together with garbage and give people terrible mortgages and just assume that no one's going to actually notice. The problem is, is that the only research that many people actually do in many cases is watch movies. So they saw the big short. They saw what's his face guy, the guy who bet a, a billion something dollars and then ended up being like, OK, I lost over like a, a week and a half ago. And these people ended up becoming famous. Peter Schiff also became famous because he screams really loud. He goes on Twitter. He talks about how bad Bitcoin is. And he keeps saying that gold is going to go up. Part of the problem is, is he's been saying this for as long as Bitcoin's been around. That means that these people who were buying gold and buying silver and buying precious metals have not only lost money, but could have made millions of dollars because this guy was lying to them. Here's a meeting from 2020. It's from VRIC 2020 with Peter Schiff and Brent Johnson, where they were debating the future of the U.S. dollar. Can you guess what he said? Can you guess where he thinks the U.S. dollar is going back in the year 2020? I'm sure you can't. Here's an article from four years ago in 2019. Everybody should abandon the U.S. dollar. This was from Peter Schiff. The guy's a psychopath. Here's from 2018. Peter Schiff says we're not in a bear market, but a house of cards that the Fed built. You know what he also said? He said the U.S. dollar is going to crash in 2018 and no one's going to be able to handle it. The whole thing is going to completely collapse. You want to go back further in time? Here's an article from November 15th, 2013. Peter Schiff, the next crisis looms. Trouble lies ahead for the dollar, says investment guru Peter Schiff. Is it time to once again load up on gold? Is it that people like losing money or is it that people want lies to be true? Do you like? No, I mean, people must like it. There's a reason why other cryptocurrency YouTube channels, I, I said it before, why they get so many views. It has to be this like desire for something imaginary to actually become real. I think a lot of people in many cases want to always try to be or think that they're going to be one step ahead, ahead of everyone else, listening to people who simply stand on the street on top of a soapbox and declare things out loud. Part of the issue has always been for a very long time is that we 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 currently know like the next big thing. This is why you're listening to this right now. This is why you're into crypto. Like we know that gold is garbage. And I've said that before and I know some people unsubscribed and I and I I sincerely hope you have a great life with your piece of metal. Like I I don't know what to honestly tell you anymore at this point because it's just extremely exhausting to constantly be in this situation where like we know that no one's going to be using gold in the next 20 to 30 years. Gold was made popular before we had technology and people were digging it out of the ground going, wow, it's shiny. Let me melt it and make it into coins. We have moved so far beyond that as a society. It is literally sad that some people still have the illusion that we are going to need gold or want gold or that we aren't finding more gold. And I can hear someone, I can hear someone in the background. I can hear you. That anyone's going to want to use gold. Nonetheless, literally spreading the lie 
This guy's been doing it since before 2007, 2008, by the way. That the US dollar's crash is imminent. It's one thing to hear this from my vantage point once or twice. You go, oh my gosh, that sounds scary. Then you hear it again the next year and you go, oh, what happened? What happened the last year? But when you really can zoom out and you see that these people have been doing the exact same things for so long. And the worst part for me will always be knowing that this was not going to happen. If you are an actual economist, if you have studied the economy and the U.S. dollar and the strength of the greenback, the U.S. dollar isn't going anywhere for a very, very, very long time. Odds are it's going to exist simultaneously beside Bitcoin for longer than we can begin to imagine. Also tying, I mean, literally directly into this news as well. When I saw this, my eyes could not roll quickly enough into the back of my head. Peter Schiff said he's unimpressed when Bitcoin moved a couple days over $40,000. He said, and I quote, gold has completely broken out. There are most days and most months where gold's price has literally not moved or has gone up by about $4 in either direction, up or down. Peter Schiff then goes on to Twitter and says, well, Bitcoin has only doubled this year. Gold is up by $4. Just wait. You're all going to want to hold. And I'm like, do you hear yourself? Like, what is the. Is it is it like some kind of like. Dementia fueled delusion. That's not a joke either. Like, think about that. Think about, imagine, imagine you, imagine you over the course of the last 15 years kept on telling your friend something and you're like, it's going to happen tomorrow and then it never happens. What do you think would be going wrong with your brain? It's nuts to think about. It is absolutely insane. And for those of you who've never seen the chart, here it is again. It says Bitcoin versus gold over the last 14.2 years. I think the last time we saw this chart, it said exactly 14 years. It basically goes on if you had invested $1 into Bitcoin 14.2 years ago. The moment Bitcoin came out and the moment gold was there, you bought $1 worth of gold, $1 worth of Bitcoin. If you bought a dollar worth of gold, you would have a dollar and 94 cents. If you bought Bitcoin, you'd have $38 million. You see this line right here? This wee, that line? That's Bitcoin. That's Bitcoin consistently going up over the course of 14 years. You know where gold is? Can you guess where gold is? It's not the purple line. It's not. It's, it's, it's not. It's this. It's this yellow line right here that has not moved in 14 years. Why Peter Schiff remains so popular, why other sociopaths within this space also retain huge amounts of popularity, I don't know. I used to think before that maybe people like wanted to be some of these people. I understand, or rather the mindset of like, oh, I want to be that rich, but like, you want to be that crazy too? You want to have no understanding of the world? Peter Schiff said something a couple of years ago where he was like, I think his son his son bought some crypto or some Bitcoin. And he was like, yeah, you know, he's going to lose all his money. I I would assume he's made more money than you buying gold that has not moved. It's It hasn't even doubled in 14 years. It has not even doubled. You know how sad I would be? Can you imagine if in 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 2018, you got into the cryptocurrency market and you're like, oh, Seems kind of volatile. I'm going to buy some gold instead. You would have exactly as... It's not even a hedge against inflation. You've lost money comparative to the US dollar. You have lost money. And I know that, finishing the thought, by the time... Bitcoin goes to one hundred thousand dollars. This guy's not going to let up, and I and I and I don't know what would, what would make him. In what scenario will this guy finally get it? Because every single time the Bitcoin's price goes higher, if you pay attention, he this guy's on Twitter, nonstop talking about Bitcoin's price. 
I don't know what is what is going to make him. Does Bitcoin have to go to a million so he realizes he can never have a full Bitcoin to be like, all right, you guys won. Very frustrating news because this news ends up terrifying people. I told you all that before. It happened to a lot of friends and family members. You, they read the news. They, they see these things from these people who are supposed to be respected. Like that other guy, Jim Cramer, constantly telling people, nah, Bitcoin's garbage. Don't get into Bitcoin. If that man holds Bitcoin, people are going to be furious with him. Because he's been telling people also almost for a decade. Imagine all these rich people, all these wealthy people standing in line, lying to you, telling you not to buy the thing. That would have made you $38 million. Imagine, 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 imagine. And then to talk about the end of the... If you get a chance, find a proper documentary. Not one of these like really weird, someone is throwing together a whole bunch of uh, stock images, videos about the end of the US dollar. Like find stuff on exactly how strong the US dollar really is. Do you think that they haven't anticipated... Okay, whatever. Anyway, uh, that's Peter Schiff has been um, shifting all over the place for the last uh, 15 years or so. News. Uh-huh, yeah. Right. Okay. Let's move on. Also in the news, I'm going to try and explain this one a little bit. This is like news that we haven't really, we, we get drizzles of this every now and again, but this is kind of like a, a big update. People in South Korea will next year have the opportunity to use deposit tokens based on a central bank digital currency through a pilot program operated by the Bank of Korea and financial authorities. 100,000 people will be able to purchase goods with deposit keys issued by commercial banks in the form of a central bank digital currency, similar to using a voucher at a store. The Bank of Korea's announcement came just one week after Kristalina Georgieva, managing director of the International Monetary Fund, urged countries to be more proactive in their push towards pushing central bank digital currencies onto the public. The last couple of years, you've heard about central bank digital currencies. One of the larger problems that they're currently having is that no one wants them and no one wants to use them. And I don't mean from the perspective of I've seen a lot of politicians within the states who are like vehemently against the idea of a central bank digital currency, talking about it, it, it destroys their, their privacy, their private life, all these other... Yada, yada, yada. I already went over with you. Everything you do already is traced and tracked. Like you are, you have no private sphere and you have not for more than a decade. On the other side of it is that no one, as far as no one really wanting it, we already exist in a digital world. A lot of the stuff that we buy online exists through you buying through Amazon, through you using Apple Pay. When you buy stuff on your tablet, on your phone, you're probably using PayPal or you're tapping with your card that pops up on the screen. Like we live in a world where like we, me and you, us, don't need to transition directly into another form of a digital currency that's issued by the government because we're already using the dollar, the euro, the yen, the peso in digital form. So reissuing something that we're already using is nearly completely nonsense. And then also, as far as no one using them, a lot of countries have already and have for the last three to four years already launched their central bank digital currencies. The issue is, is convincing people to use it. And it's a huge problem because China, a couple of years ago, launched their central bank digital currency and made really big news. But the problem was is that no one was going to a bank or going online to like redeem their paper money or their, you know, their stuff in their bank account for for the digital coin. Why would I do that? I'm already paying for things digitally. So what they did is the country actually had a number of airdrops. 
and they were trying to pass it off as if it was like something good for the community. But they were trying to make it. Um, what's the word? If you hear that your friend next door got airdropped five thousand dollars, you would go. <gasps> I also want it. So th this is kind of what they were trying to do, like kind of like build up hype for the government to be like, oh my gosh, like give me free money. But it also didn't work because no one wanted it. So a lot of the stuff that people were getting either weren't redeemed or people were using it, but it didn't cause like a big of a fuss that the public was also like, oh, me, 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 me. I also want to use it. So far, 11 countries with some in the Caribbean and including Nigeria have launched a central bank digital currency and more than 120 countries are currently exploring central bank digital currencies as well. During a speech in Singapore, Georgieva, Georgieva? Okay, said, we may be at a point where the public sector needs to offer a little more guidance, not to crowd out, not to disrupt, but to act as a catalyst to ensure safety and efficiency and to counter fragmentation. Fragmentation is that every country's building their own and they're not really interoperable as far as like being able to pass from one place to another. And a lot of banks are also creating their own as well. This is a bit of an issue when JP Morgan is creating their own central bank coin, whatever, what have you, or a banking coin. But then there's also the central bank also talking about creating their own. And then you have Bank of America talking about creating their own. And before you know it, you have 45 different competing ones who are all trying to exist in the exact same place. It's fragmentation. That's in one country. That doesn't even constitute the other 190 countries who are all trying to do the exact same thing at the exact same time. Nonetheless, creating these things and people don't want it and people don't use it. It's a gigantic problem. So now they're trying to find some kind of a way to like almost incentivize or trick people into believing that it's something that they could want or need in some sort of fashion or some sort of way. The entire idea of central bank digital currencies is just about control. That's not a tinfoil hat thing. Like we've actually heard depositions from people in Congress and in the Senate before. This was years ago around the time when Facebook was trying to make their own coin. Remember that one? The idea is that uh, the government is trying to beat the popularity of Bitcoin, but they're doing it in a very centralized way. And it's actually one of the biggest mess ups. That's a nice word for it that we've ever seen in a very long time when it comes to something like this. Because if you simply just try to have better economic policies and or strengthen the use of the US dollar, more people would be inclined to use it. But you trying to create other variations of it is just not going the right way. And then also trying to find a way to like give a little bit more guidance to the public and to your people, not to disrupt them, but to make sure that they understand and you find ease in actually using it. It's nonsense because the internet exists. One of the really one of the really funny things about the last decade or so is the actual speed at which news uh, passes around the world. It's a Double-edged sword simply because of the ease of fake news that can spread quite quickly. But also, if there is a problem somewhere around the world or with something, we can get the information within seconds, all of us around the world. One of the things that we heard of years ago from the people in, um, in the Senate or in Congress was the idea of how much the government would have control over the central bank digital currency. One of the things that stuck out was the idea, if, if there should be a stock market crash, the market's going down for the last four, five, six weeks, would governments be able to essentially freeze people's accounts with the digital currency and kind of like siphon it away and push enough money back into the stock market to bring it on back up, essentially? And the guy was like, yeah, of course, we'd be able to do that. Now... Besides being terribly unethical, uh, the other part is the moment that happens, because it is going to happen, understand, there is going to be a country somewhere around the world, and we are going to hear about it nearly instantaneously in real time as people are going to start recording, screen, like screen recording their phones, showing you the money in real time leaving their account. They're going to upload it online and everyone else around the world will see how much of a debacle that actually is or was. And then everyone will fight back against it. 
So it's just this really weird thing that we currently have going on where governments are like, and it's, you you control everything. I, I don't understand being a government and trying to actively make sure that you have more control when you literally control the entire world. All of our payments that we make right now are already tracked and traced. Why do you need for us to go to another digital currency that's based off of a currency that has terrible economic policies is going to inflate forever so that you can freeze our money when you mess up and the stock market crashes. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. And for those of you who also weren't here years ago, this was one of the earlier predictions for Bitcoin, is that this, that, that moment, should it happen, is going to be like the gigantic domino falling for Bitcoin. As of now, we have 100 million people into the cryptocurrency space. But should there ever be a situation where in a country or multiple countries, there's like a market crash and the governments go, okay, cool, we can take money from our citizens. People around the world would literally go, no, 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 no. I need to move to something as safe as possible. And this is where the essentially, you know, million, hundred million dollar Bitcoin narrative kind of comes in. Yeah. So apparently the International Monetary Fund is trying to get countries to... uh do a little bit more to make sure that they they push this on to people because no 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 one actually no one actually wants this it says nonetheless countries that have tried to implement cbdc's have seen little adoption likening the efforts to a nautical journey georgieva georgieva said if anything we need to raise another sail to pick up speed the world is changing faster than most imagined or just just have proper economic policies and we wouldn't be in this mess. Yeah, that's the uh, central bank digital currency news. I think we all could have probably predicted that they were going to be garbage, as I told you. It's just a digital version of the of the fiat nonsense that we already have. But, you know, looking forward to the next 10 years when no one uses them even more. I do sincerely hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.